rain was in the forecast. Finally, I had projects to finish before it came. First, I needed to finish the roof on the sawmill shed, and while I was at it, the floor, and I needed to get the last of the logs out of the marsh before it became a lake. The battens were primed. All I had to do was paint them. I didn't choose yellow because I particularly like the color, although I do. The hardware store had three gallons already mixed and marked down to $10 each. The paint dries fast enough that by the time I finished one side and edge, I could start again and do the other side and edge. After an hour or two in the sun, the battens were ready to nail onto the roof. There weren't many logs left in the marsh. I'd been telling myself one or two more trips ought to do it for the last several trips. But this trip plus one more really would finish the job. Two at a time makes the job go faster until one of the two runs into a stump. My short homemade ATV ramps have served me well for 20 years. But after seeing this, I bought proper aluminum ATV ramps. Cheap insurance against a broken neck. The small stuff became firewood. We'll put it under a tarp and it'll be nice and dry for campers next year. The battens are ready to go on the roof. And I need a few more floorboards. Out to the end of the sawmill track. I'm not going to try to come to the end of the building. No point in it. So, the sawmill shed is almost finished. Right now, it's break time. Or breaker time. Either one will do. A lot of people think what I do is dangerous. And some of it is. But probably the most dangerous thing I do is climb ladders. Try to get these up onto the roof without scraping off that fresh yellow paint. I drilled a hole for the 16 penny nails for two reasons. Alder when dry is very hard and two I wanted to be able to easily drive the nails part way through so I could put the point between the roof boards and be sure not to drive it through the boards. With a point through, it was easy to set the batten. I repeated the process at the center purlin and again at the back edge. Okay, when you've seen one, you've seen them all. We'll speed it up just a little bit.
The only thing left to do is to screw each batten into the 2x2 two two stringer I have under the top edge of the roof. This holds the battens down tight on the boards and holds the entire edge of the roof nice and snug. No, Pelican Pub does not pay me for product placement, although maybe they should. The last touch is to make sure the top edge, the top end of each board is thoroughly coated in paint. I also painted every nail head on the roof and looked over carefully for spots I might have missed when painting on the ground. When all the nails and screws were in and paint covered everything, I was ready for rain. Now for the floor. I began cutting shiplap on the table saw. Two cuts for each rabbit or rebate. Four cuts for each board. One of you pointed out that a router might be easier. I tried it and it's much too slow, at least with my dull bits. Then I remembered I had a set of dado blades that I bought more than 20 years ago and never used. I found them, stacked 9 sixteenths of an inch worth, and quickly cut all the channels with two passes per board. This method went faster than either the router or the saw blade. Not this fast, but close enough. One more pair of sawmill track feet to trim around. It would probably have been easier if I'd laid the floor and then the track, but too late now. Not quite enough. I drilled holes for all the nails near the end to make sure the boards wouldn't split. 
and I drilled holes for the nails in the middle because it made it much easier to drive them. These fur boards are a lot straighter than the alder ones, but I still needed to persuade one or two into line. One more. This is the last load from the marsh. These ramps are much safer and more comfortable. Should have bought them years ago. The last load of free logs was finally at the mill. Another project completed. And there was one more log. It had been down so long and it was so rotten. You could kick it to pieces with your bedroom slippers. I couldn't move it. So we've got more firewood and logs. I need to get all these leaves off the roof before the rain comes. I don't want them holding water and forcing it under the battens. I discovered my sawdust blower is also useful for blowing leaves. The blower makes quick work of most of them and the broom takes care of the few that are stuck under battens. I think we're ready for rain. That's not the only roof covered with leaves. This shed roof is plywood and it does leak at the joints when leaves pile water behind them. The plastic roof over the shed extension is pretty much watertight. I need to put a tarp over the lumber I've cut for our deck extension and then I'm ready for rain. We got more than two inches of rain over the next few days. The sawmill floor stayed dry. I'm happy. Thanks for watching.